Across the M1 from last week's events at Houghton is Kalani Country Club, the host of this week's IGT Race to Q School Series event. The course, which has been host to many prestigious golfing events, hosted a full field of golfers this week who all had aspirations of taking home the trophy. The course is known for its tight fairways and speedy greens and the course didn't disappoint this week. The past 70 with only two par fives is a true ball strikers course with every tee shot and pro shot having a small margin of error. To tell us a bit more about the course and how the players should approach is Kalani's head professional, Warwick Druan. Well the course is in great condition considering we haven't had much rain. Greens in my opinion are 10 out of 10, the staff have done a great job. Um, the guys, the premium this, premium this week is on accuracy, so if you're not in the fairway off the tee, this course is very difficult. It's not a long golf course, it's an old classic, we used to have big tournaments in the old days. It's just a fantastic old gem and it's going to re hopefully reintroduce these youngsters and come play a really, really good golf course. It was a three-horse race moving into the final round. Jason Froman, Terence Borderman and Brian Andrew Rulofs shared the lead with all showing great form with 18 to play. The low round of the tournament so far belonged to Brian Andrew who shot an impressive 65 in round 2 which consisted of an impressive 9 threes. The nerves were high as the leaders teed off. The hole was played in three different ways as Froman 3 putted after leaving his approach well short. Borman's approach was a little long but after a great putt from the fringe he walked off with an easy par. Rulofs, who had a great approach shot from the right rough, left himself an 8-footer for birdie, which resulted in the perfect start. Froman would give another shot back on the third, which would leave him two back, but he would soon gain one back after Rulofs missed the green on the par 3 fourth and had this left for par. Rulofs would soon have a chance to regain that shot because the first of two par 5s followed the fourth. After Froman and Borman both hit the green, Rulofs left his approach shot in the back bunker and showed us some soft hands to leave himself a short putt for birdie. Froneman and Boardman both had good first putts and left themselves easy chances for birdie. Froneman converted but Boardman's nerves got the better of him and he let one slip away. The pressure shifted to Rulofs to maintain his advantage but he showed off some icy veins to convert a clutch up and down. We caught up with him after the birdie to see how he's feeling. It's going alright, just made one bogey. Um, see what the rest of mine has in store for me. But, oh, we'll see what happens. I mean, the game is there. You know, a few mistakes. Let's try and minimize the mistakes and see what happens. The ninth hole took some hostage this week, and with the flag back left, it didn't seem like giving up. After all three in the final group failed to miss the green, only Froneman managed to walk away with the par. After nine, Boardman had this to say about his strategy moving into the final nine. I feel alright, just got to hit a couple more barriers, make a couple more putts. We should be there at the end of it. Froneman was in contention all the way, but the tough 11th took its toll. After a pulled approach, he had a difficult chip shot ahead which sailed across the green. He tried to be cute and by putting from the fringe and left himself a six-footer to try and save his bogey. After doubling the 11th, the lead seemed insurmountable for Bournemouth and he finished the day with a final round 73. Rulof seemed unbeatable moving into the short par 314th. Another pulled shot left him scrambling for par. He couldn't convert and we asked him afterwards how he felt after such a soft drop. Uh, a bit disappointed. Uh, easy hole and make a drop on it. Uh see what happens. I've got a par 5 coming up now. Let's see if we can make a bird and try to bring it back a little bit. The par 5 15 would prove to be a pivotal hole in the tournament. After Rulofs had to settle for the par, Froman pulled off a miracle of a pitch to leave himself a short putt for birdie. After converting his birdie, he had this to say about his chances moving into the final three holes. Uh, one shot behind and I'm just hoping to just keep to my game plan and see what happens in the red next three holes. Hopefully it goes well. On the 16th, Froman had a great tee shot and an impressive approach to leave himself an 8-footer for birdie. Rulofs had some trouble off the tee which left him dead in the trees. It looked like a two-shot swing was coming but Rulofs had a trick up his sleeve. 
His approach shot sailed on the first tree and over the second to end up 10 foot from the flag and by far the shot of the tournament. Rulo still pumped up from his approach blasted his birdie chance 6 feet by. Froman's birdie chance just slipped by and Ruloff had some work to do to maintain his narrow lead. He converted and moving to the final hole after a bogey on 17 by Froman, Ruloff had a two shot lead. Froman didn't give up and still believed he could take it to a playoff and after an amazing approach the possibility was still there after Ruloff's second shot left him putting from the fringe. Ruloff's first putt left him a shaky four-footer, so if Froman converted, a playoff was all of a sudden possible. Froman's putt just missed and it left Ruloff with two putts to take home his first victory of the Race to Q School Series. After lifting the trophy, we asked him how he felt. I'm quite tough, actually. Um, the last nine was very tough. Uh, I held it together quite nicely and nerve-wracking at times, but you know what, I just put my head down and I just did what I had to do and it worked out. The Joburg swing is over and off we move to Pretoria for the next couple of events with next week finding the tour at Centurion Country Club. The final round is on Wednesday, November 4th. Come out and support the players when they try and take on the trophy in the next IGT Race to Q School Series event.